Hey everybody, this is Dream. We have a nice little nine game slate here today. Uh, we have some good teams and some bad teams playing. And we have some really strange teams that we are, are that look stackable today, like uh, Oakland and Washington and Chicago White Sox. And then we have some teams that seem pretty good that you would expect to be good, like Atlanta and Seattle and Toronto. So I, I definitely think that Atlanta and Oakland and Chicago White Sox are the best teams to stack. But you can make some good arguments for Toronto, Seattle, and Washington just based on matchups and pitchers and stuff like that. Uh, so without further ado, I will get into the pitchers I do like. But I do want to mention for Seattle that you really only want to prioritize right-handed hitters because Tyler Alexander has been really good against lefties this season. But overall, Seattle is still a really safe position in a safe position. Um, some of these guys, like uh, Annabelle Sanchez for the Washington Nationals, uh, he has been completely awful. Uh, he's not even made it through five inning. He's not made it out of the fifth inning in a single game this season. And Oakland did really good against Washington yesterday when they pitched Fetty. And I look for them to have a similar game against Annabelle Sanchez. Um, as for Atlanta, they had a good game yesterday against Colorado with the exception they couldn't get runs across. Uh, but uh, we can hope that they can start doing that. But they still got quite a few hits and several of their batters did really well for us anyway in DraftKings. But... You know, obviously we would pre prefer some home runs and stuff like that, but I think that they're going to have a better chance tomorrow against Colorado and Ryan Feltner. Uh, and then the Chicago White Sox, they just have, like, all the data suggests that they're going to just really uh, be good tomorrow. Uh, both lefties and righties are just going to kill the ball is what I'm thinking is going to happen. And so I definitely recommend looking at some of those guys as well. Um, so for the, pl coach, for the uh, pitchers, I do like... We do kind of have a rough matchup for pretty much top to bottom on this slate when it comes to the good pitchers all the way down to the, you know, crappier pitchers. It seems like some of the best pitchers are going against good teams and some of the bad pitchers are going against not great teams, if that makes sense. Uh, but at any rate, let me go ahead and get into my top two. The first two are DeGrom and Garrett Cole. Now, Garrett Cole is going against the Angels, who are a strikeout machine, uh, and he's a strikeout machine as well. And so... You know, I, I feel like that even if he gives up a home run or something to, to Trout or to Otani, he's in position where he's going to be able to take take advantage of that. So of that team and score pretty good chunkable points. So you look at this game against Oakland where he went seven innings, gave up a home run, an earned run, and walked a couple of people. He started 11 strikeouts and scored 37 points. I think that that's completely doable in this particular matchup simply because of what the Angels have. Um, my other option is DeGrom. Now... Yes, he's playing the Dodgers. Yes, that's not ideal. But if we look at what he's done this season, he's played Atlanta twice, Philadelphia, Colorado, and Washington. His first game, obviously you're going to say he's going to have a little rust, but uh, he's actually played Atlanta twice and scored in the, 30, in the 35 and 24. And then the other two games, way over 30. I know it's the Dodgers, but I still think that he can get you 25 or so points, which, which is what you want to get out of him simply because he's got strikeouts on his side, and he just is really good against right-handers and left-handers, for that matter. So he's been just absolutely torching right-handed hitters, and uh, he, it, like I said, he's in a tough matchup, but he's not even had a sub-19 fantasy point game in the last two seasons. Now, he hadn't had that many games, but he's been pitching really well. So I definitely like him. You know, I have two other pitchers that we can look at as, as, as alternatives, which you can uh, which you can try to go to. One of them is Joe Ryan, uh, Minnesota against Baltimore. Um, he's had a one game against Boston, and he's done really well. Boston's a little bit hit or miss. Uh, he can be a little bit hit or miss, too, because he's had some tough games. But overall, I think this is a pretty good uh, place for him to be, considering that uh, Boston's you know not quite doing as good as, as you'd want. And he's been pitching quite well. Um, he's also at home, which he pitches quite a bit better at. And so I look at him as a good secondary option. He's just one of the few pitchers that is uh, a way above average who is going up against uh, not the worst opponent possible <laughs> like DeGrom is. Um, and then the other option is Lance Lynn. Now he's just coming out of a, of the uh, bereavement list. And so it's been a while. It's been a little bit uh, since he pitched. And so he's had a few extra days um, since his last outing. But he looks like he's in a pretty good position against Kansas City. Kansas City is a team that we tend to like to go up against. So as a pitcher, 
Um, and he's been pretty decent as of late. Plus, he's had two games against Kansas City, averaging 20 fantasy points a game. He's probably not going to quite get as many strikeouts as we'd like, but he's still doing okay. So we, we have him as a potential alternative at $8,000. Uh, if I had to prioritize the bottom two, I'd definitely pick Joe Ryan over Lance Lynn. But, you know, the, neither one of them has some viability. Um, I also think Mitch White has kind of been a good position, but he's not a very good pitcher. So, I mean, he, he's a he's a slightly above average, but the Cubs can hit the ball pretty good and sometimes, and I don't really love him in this situation. He's kind of like a Hail Mary option if you just desperately need it. All right, let me go ahead and get into the catchers. So I've come up with uh, five catchers I think are pretty solid for today. Um, I have uh, two top-tier ones, two secondaries, and a Hail Mary. Uh, and you'll probably recognize the Hail Mary. Uh, so the two top-tier uh, options are Travis Darno for Atlanta against Colorado. He wasn't good yesterday. He had two really ugly strikeouts. Uh, but he continues to you know make contact with the ball. And he did foul off some pitches and stuff like that. I don't know if he was just having a bad day because he didn't look like he was completely into it. But uh, I look for him as a really good home run position against Colorado's weak pitching tomorrow. Or so I say today. It's like 3 o'clock in the morning and I'm still not asleep. But that's okay. Um, the second option is Sean Murphy for Oakland against Washington. Uh, if, he, if he is the starting catcher, then he will definitely be a top option. Now if Voight is a... If he plays instead of Murphy, then he'll be a guy that you could potentially put in here as well. Um, and then I have two secondary options... Um, one of them is Shea Ling, or sorry, this is actually the, uh, the Hail Mary option, Shea Lingerlees, which we know he's like a home run or bust kind of hitter because he, he just strike out a whole bunch. So we do have to keep that in mind. If we choose to use, maybe I choose to use him, then he definitely has some option when it comes to, from the catching perspective. Um, and then the other two secondaries are uh, Carson Kelly and Yas Yasmani Grandal. Um, let's see if I can find them. Whoops. Yeah. Carson Kelly is going up against Faulkner, and he's been doing pretty well um, as of late, averaging 7.4 a game, and so I definitely like him as a secondary option. Um, and then Yasmani Grandal. He hasn't been playing a whole lot, but he's just coming off the injury list, and he should be back. Um, he has home run potential. And uh, in this particular matchup, and so I definitely like him as an option. Uh, he did really good at AAA, and so I'm definitely looking forward to him coming back and being a really solid pick, uh, catcher. Um, at first base, I have uh, five guys, three top tier options, and then two secondaries. Uh, one of the top, two of the top tier options are Vaughn from Chicago White Sox, along with Abreu from the White Sox. Um, both of these guys have really positive hitting potential. Uh, and have been hitting the ball really well. Abreu, 9 fantasy points a game, 344 average. And Vaughn has uh, has uh, outfield uh, option as well. You can put him in outfield if you want to. He's been hitting the ball pretty well, uh, averaging 6 uh, fantasy points a game. But he has some really good upside. He ne he's kind of due for another home run. As you can see, he had been hitting uh, you know, quite a few, but he's been a little bit uh, lousy as of late. But I think this is the type of game where he has potential, especially against Kansas City, who he's been really good against. Um, and then uh, the other guy is Ty France. Um, Ty France has uh, some nice upside in this matchup for Seattle as a right-handed hitter. Uh, if you remember, I said kind of avoid the lefties in this game. But he is a right-handed hitter, and he's somebody that has home run potential. He's had two home runs in the last 10, and we like him in this particular matchup. In fact, you know... Uh, yesterday, he had a really good game, scoring 30, 26 points. And then the game before that, he's 17. Uh, and before that, he had a couple games where he didn't start. And so that's partially why there's some zeros there. But uh, overall, he's been a pretty solid hitter. And uh, I definitely like him in this particular matchup. Um, and then my two secondary options are Matt Olson uh, for the uh, Braves. Uh, he's somebody that's kind of stackable. He's gotten a little bit more expensive, but he's averaging 10 points per game and a 3.08 average. He's had two home runs in the last 10. Look for him to continue that uh, tomorrow, or today, I should say. Why do I keep saying tomorrow? It's 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> anyway, uh, Luke Voigt is the other option for Washington. He's got a pretty good matchup against uh, his catch, uh, uh, pitcher in Oakland, but 
he also is kind of a boom or bust kind of guy. Uh, he's either potentially going to score a big amount of points, or he's probably not going to score that much. So that's why he's a kind of a secondary, almost a Hail Mary type option, but he's also pretty inexpensive, so he's definitely useful in that aspect. Um, at second base, uh, I have five guys, uh, three top-tier guys, which one of them is Segura for Philadelphia. Um, he's been playing really well, uh, and Philadelphia is kind of in a position where he they can do pretty good. Uh, he does need to, you know, get a couple of hits in order for him to pay off, but he's uh, not as expensive as some guys at the position, and so he's a decent option there. Um, another one who I actually like a little bit better is get is Gleyber Torres for the Yankees uh, against the LA Angels pitching. He should be able to do pretty well. He's averaged 7.3 per game against their pitching, and he is on the road, and he's actually been a little bit better on the road, and so. Uh, He's had some zeros, but he also scores, you know, kind of consistently uh, for a while. So um, it's strange because he doesn't have a great batting average, but he still manages to hit home runs. Um, that's kind of the Yankees lately, I feel like. But anyway, um, then also the final guy is Josh Rojas. Uh, I like him quite a bit, actually. Uh, despite the fact that second base is kind of weak, I guess, uh, he was one of the guys I really liked. He's batting 264. He's got five home runs. On, on the road, I meant to look at the home, sorry, um, sorry, not the home, but the last 10, he's got 6.7 points per game, I write down, uh, this, uh, what they've done, and I looked at the wrong thing, and that's my, my fault, um, anyway, against Philadelphia, he's got seven, uh, fantasy points a game, and so this is a nice little plus matchup for him, he had seven points yesterday as well, and so I definitely like him in this position, though he's a little bit more expensive than I usually want to pay. But he is a top-tier option. Then I have two uh, secondary options. Uh, the top option, the top secondary option, per se, is Von Grisham. Uh, he is just absolutely mashing the ball. I mean, this guy has been getting hits a lot, and he's been batting really well. Um, and tomorrow should be no different for him. He's also been, you know, he scored 12 points yesterday, even though they... Couldn't string the runs in. He still hit the ball well. And so we definitely like to see that against, you know, average pitching especially. So uh, for him, uh, he definitely looks like a pretty solid option against a bad team. And he's really good at home. And so we definitely like that. Um, and then the other one is Quito Marte. Marte. Um, he's a little bit more expensive too. Uh, and he's probably not my favorite option at this position at, for, the, for Arizona. But I feel like he's a pretty good shape. Uh, he does have some boomer bust mentality kind of going because, uh, you know, he doesn't particularly hit the ball super well lately, but he is kind of do a home run. So I kind of look at that as a potential option for him. That's why he's a secondary and not as top tier because he doesn't really have, he hadn't been that good of late. But overall, he has some potential, and but I would still take Josh Rojas over him. And sorry for butchering the names. <laughs> uh, the next guy that I like quite a bit is for a third base, I should say is Emmanuel uh, Riviera. Uh, he's a Hail Mary option for Arizona. He's actually been not hitting the ball well, but he's averaging eight base points a game. And you'd think that if you're hitting 178, you'd have a bunch of zeros on the board, but he really doesn't. I mean, he's had one uh, recently. And so I really like his possibility in a matchup like this just because he's got some pl he got a plus matchup. Um uh, some of the other guys that I think are also good are uh, Gio uh, Yoshella. Um, he's been from Minnesota, has, you know, averaging about six points per game. But he's also getting like some, uh, you know, like doubles and triples and stuff, which we like. And he's got some capability to score points. And he really hadn't had any too many bad games either. So that's always a nice advantage. And he's super inexpensive. Um, another guy that I like is pretty good, uh, Alec Bohm. Um, he has, uh, been really good at 10 points per game, though his price has gotten pretty expensive. I'm not a big fan of that price, but for what his production has been lately, then that price is kind of, you know, that's why it's come up. Um, I don't really, this is probably the position that I'd like the least, simply because the options are kind of not perfect. Um, but, you know, when you got a guy like Austin Riley, uh, if you can afford to pay up for him, then you can definitely uh, take care of your lineup with him. Uh, he definitely has a lot of upside. Even yesterday against Colorado when they didn't hit the ball particularly 
uh, good in a, round, in a row or whatever. They still had individuals that hit the ball really well, and he was one of them. He scored 12 points yesterday. If we can get that out of him today, uh, that would be pretty nice. Uh, he's also been really good against Colorado this year, averaging 13.2. Um, and then the last guy is DJ uh, LeMayu for the Yankees. Um, he's actually not been hitting the ball very well, but he's very due for a home run, I feel like. And it's kind of a plus, it's a really good plus matchup for him. Plus, he's been good against the Angels, so it's just like a matter of time. He had nine points yesterday, and so I look for him to continue to, you know, smack some points around. Now, if I had to rank those guys in order, I would probably say uh, Urshela, uh, Riley, Boom, uh, LeMayu, and then Rivera. But all of them have some potential to do pretty well. At shortstop, I only have three players here, and they're each in the kind of a different uh, level of uh, of price range. The first one is Heavier Bayes. Now, he hasn't been hitting the ball well, 189. He's got six fantasy points per game, but he had been kind of injured uh, a little bit, and so he's starting to get back into the game. And with that said, he's kind of gotten a plus matchup uh, against Seattle as being a right-handed hitter for Detroit. Now, um, I don't love this pick, but he's okay. This this position, too, like third base, is kind of difficult today. But uh, he seems like that he can score some points. And, you know, he's actually been pretty good, despite the fact that he's had some injuries and stuff like that. I feel like he's kind of due for a home run sometime soon. And he's not very expensive, so that's a nice help. But he's kind of a secondary pick. So my top picks are Carlos Correa and Dansby Swanson. Uh, Dansby Swanson is probably going to lead off, which is going to be beneficial for him. And then Carlos Correa, he's actually been hitting 324 with 8 points per game, which is pretty close to what we need him to get to. Uh, as you can see, he doesn't have too many bad games, but he's had a few up and down. But he's kind of been on a run recently, so we definitely like him. Obviously, he's more expensive, but uh, he's not nearly as expensive as Swanson, who is uh, who is quite a bit more expensive than him. At 5,400. But if you can afford Swanson, he definitely has some potential to really uh, mash the ball. And he's, you know, without Acuna in the lineup, he's going to be a little bit more needed to be relied on. And uh, against Colorado, he's been really solid all season. Um, for outfielders, uh, so I have I have actually one, two, three, four, five, six top tier guys. One of them I've already talked about, which is Vaughn uh, for the uh, Chicago White Sox. Uh, then Jake McCarthy um, for Arizona, he has been just mashing the ball. 368, 13 points per game. Definitely like that. Um, then we have uh, Michael Harris for the Atlanta Braves. Now, he did pretty good yesterday. He scored eight points because he got a steal. And he has really good steal potential. And one thing I've noticed uh, uh, watching the Colorado teams play this year is that their pitchers, some of their pitchers have some really slow releases. And for a player like Harris, he can really take advantage of that. So he got a nice steal against them yesterday to get himself to 8 points. Even though I only went 1 for 5, he didn't strike out. He still fit the ball in play. It was just, you know, sometimes you had a little bit bad luck when you hit the ball right to outfielders and stuff like that. But he's definitely a top tier, and he's not too expensive. And he's just been hitting the ball great ever since he came up for, into the majors. So I really like him quite a bit. Uh, my next top tier guy is Riley Green for uh, Detroit. He's in a plus matchup against Gonzalez, and he's been actually mashing the ball as well. He's had two home runs in the last 10, um, and he's been just, you know, I think he's had four games that it's been plus 10 the last uh, four games, and he's had five out of the last seven. So we look for him to potentially cont continue that against average pitching. Um, and then Andrew Benintendi uh, for the Yankees. He's just been really solid as of late, and he's got a weak uh, pitcher he's gone up against. He doesn't usually hit a whole lot of home runs. Now, he does have two in the last ten, so that's a little bit unusual. But we're really not banking on that. We're looking for him to get base hits and get on base, you know, do things like get steals and stuff like that. So uh, he definitely has some upside for us there. And our final top-tier option, which is the most expensive one, is Mitch Hanniger for Seattle. Uh, like I told you early on, uh, for Seattle, you know, prioritize right-handed hitters. So if you can get that stack in, he's going to be somebody you're going to want. He has, you know, really high-scoring potential, and he also does hit the ball pretty decently. Um, he is averaging 8.4 because he's hitting three home runs in the last 10 games, so he definitely has some upside there. 
Then I have uh, three secondary options. One of them is Lane Thomas for Washington, who has a plus matchup at the pitching perspective. He's been accident, absolutely mashing the ball. 308, 9.3 with three home runs in the last 10 games. So obviously he's kind of a little bit boomier, busty, but uh, I still feel like he's a good secondary option and he's really inexpensive. Uh, Max Kepler ha- is the next guy that I like. Okay, he's got a plus matchup against Waka for Boston. Um, and he's been not hitting the ball. Well, he's been hitting the ball right at average, but he is kind of due for some home runs from a home run. So I look for him as a potential, this to be a potential place where he might get it. And then uh, the final secondary option is Ian Hop uh, for Chicago Cubs. Uh, he has just been hitting the ball pretty well. Come on, load. Um, he's got two home runs the last 10, averaging 7.7 point a game. I always like him when he when he shows up in my algorithm as a top option, then I typically like to play him because he does have home run potential, and it seems like most of the time when he ta- he pops up on my uh, on my algorithm that uh, projections I should say that uh, at the top of, for outfielders, then he's somebody I like to use. And then I have one Hail Mary guy here at this position, and that's Chad Pender. Now. Oakland has a really plus matchup against uh, Washington, and, uh, you know, he's a little bit hit or miss, but uh, he has home run potential, and we definitely like that in this particular position. Uh, Oakland has some poten- potential today. So he didn't play yesterday either, and so hopefully he'll be back to uh, to get, uh, you know, to score against, against uh, Washington. So that's pretty much what I have for this uh, setup. I think we have some really good games today, like I said. Uh, and we have some good players that we can utilize in a lot of games where I feel like there's going to be a high scoring, at least one high scoring team, if not two. Uh, that's pretty much all I have for this video. If you do like it, uh, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And thanks for hanging out and have a nice day, guys.